Yo, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of the Swiss. Got FPS games on Friday night. There's three of them, all from different conferences, too. We got uh, AAC, we got Pac-12, and we got Mountain West. A little bit of diversity here. Uh, so let's get into it. Update. So I recorded this video before Thursday night's games. Uh, we split one and one. We got Houston uh, lost on ECU. They hung in there for most of the game. Uh, they threw a pick six in the fourth quarter. They were down seven to make it 14. So that was just it. But uh, yeah, we split last night. Welcome to the Swiss. The Swiss. Swiss. Hey, get the Swiss. First up, Tulane on the road at Memphis. You got Memphis catching four and a half points at home. Uh, that number's up from three and a half, so it's moved towards Tulane. Uh, total sitting at 54 and a half. That number's down from 57. So uh, total moved down as well. So like I said, this line was at three and a half on Monday morning. Uh, early action came in pretty heavy on Tulane, moved it up to four and a half. Since then, ton of bets have come in on Memphis. Public's now leaning Memphis, and the sharp action is also on Memphis at four and a half. So let's start with some head-to-head -head history. Uh, these two teams have split three and three in the last six years. Actually, the home team is a perfect six and zero. Oh. Uh, in the last six years memphis has taken the last three in memphis tulane has taken the last three at tulane uh so the matchup history favors memphis obviously in this one because this game's in memphis kind of tough to get a read on this tulane team right now uh they're four and one but the two games i really would be curious to see week two versus ole miss because that's by far their toughest competition so far this year and week three versus southern miss because that was their only road game those are the two games i'd really like to take a look at problem is Michael Pratt didn't play in either of those two games, so how can we evaluate this two-lane team when their quarterback was out? In the three games Michael Pratt has played in, he's been basically perfect. Uh, 11 yards per pass attempt, completing over 75% of his passes, a 207.4 passer rating. Tulane won all three of those games comfortably. They did go down early uh, in the UAB game, but they ended up coming back and winning by double digits. But that's the problem. Those three games, they were all at home. They were against UAB, South Alabama, and Nichols, an FCS program. On the road against Memphis is a much tougher spot than any of those three. The good news for Michael Pratt and Tulane would be Memphis defense has definitely been disappointing this year. Uh, not that it was projected to be a top 40 defense, but they definitely expected it to be better than this. Memphis defense is ranked just 105th in the FBS, 103rd in effective rush, 103rd in effective pass as well. Look at specifically the last three games. Memphis is allowing 30 points a game, damn near 500 yards per game, 10.2 yards per pass attempt, and 5.5 yards per carry. Teams are running the ball, throwing the ball, doing whatever they want on this Memphis defense right now. And the scariest part is all three of those games where Memphis defense was getting lit up, they were all at home. They were against Navy, Missouri. Now, Missouri, I'll give you. Missouri's looking good. But Navy, Missouri, and Boise State. Navy and Boise State should not be coming into your home stadium and averaging seven yards of play on you. Tulane's offense is ranked better than any of the three teams I just named that ripped Memphis defense up. Uh, Tulane's offense is currently rated 32nd, according to beta rank, 35th in effective rush, 43rd in effective pass. And they might even be better than that because uh, Michael Pratt, like I said earlier, he only played in three of the five games. I'm not sure if beta rank includes that, though, in their metrics. They might. I don't see any reason on paper why Tulane doesn't put up a big number on Memphis, just like the last three teams did. But on the other side of the ball, I don't see how Memphis isn't putting points on the board right back on them. Uh, Seth Hennigan definitely going to make plays through the air. He's a good quarterback. Week four, they played Missouri. Now, Missouri's pass defense isn't as great as we thought it would be, but it's still an SEC program, and he was pretty good in that game. He dropped back to pass 47 times, 316 yards three touchdowns two picks a 135 passer rate now two lanes defense has played very well this year uh far outperformed my expectations i knew two lanes offense was going to be good they were good last year they lost Haji spears but they brought the quarterback back a lot of production i did not expect the defense to be playing like this two lane held jackson dart to 17 of 27 267 yards two touchdowns and a pick his passer rating was like 160 in the game i mean it was it was a pretty good game but by jackson dart standards that's not an amazing game uh, and Judkins and that powerhouse Ole Miss run game, 35 carries for just 89 yards against Tulane. This defense has been surprisingly good, but we do have to mention that that Ole Miss game was week two at home where Tulane's much better. On the road at a conference rival like Memphis, Seth Hennigan coming off a bye, it's a little bit different. Look, betting this game comes down to a simple question. If you're following the numbers, Tulane minus four and a half should be the play. They've shown us they're probably about a touchdown better than Memphis right now, at least so far this year. But there's also the angle of, yo, this is Friday night, prime time, conference rival. This is college football. 
you got the home dog catching four and a half. Screw the numbers. There's also that angle as well. I'm personally saying screw the numbers on this one. I'm taking Memphis plus four and a half. I know the defense has been awful recently, but coming off a of bye week, I think they get up for this one. Uh, and I think Seth Hennigan will make plays through the air. Probably also would lean over. Uh, but I'm taking the points. Memphis plus four and a half and a lean towards the over next game. Let's talk some Mountain West football. Fresno State's on the road at Utah State. Line is currently Utah State plus four and a half, which is down from seven. Move two and a half uh, points in this one. Total sitting at 57 and a half. So check this out. We got the public pretty split in this one, slightly leaning towards Fresno State. Sharp money all over Fresno. But the line still drops two and a half points through a couple key numbers. Line was at seven Monday morning. Definitely some weird reverse line movement in this one. I would definitely keep my eye open for possible injuries, something like that. I'm going to skip this one for now. Uh, Fresno State should win this one, but Utah State looks a lot better in the last three weeks. I bet them back in week three on the road at Air Force, and they got absolutely dismantled. Since then, they've come back from down three scores to tie the game against James Madison. They beat UConn on the road, and they just crushed Colorado State last week. That Colorado State quarterback, Fowler Nicolosi, he's been playing well, too. He couldn't get any anything going through the air on the road at Utah State. Uh, we just saw Fresno's offense look really mediocre in their loss on the road at Wyoming. Uh, so I think I'm going to take the points with Utah State on this one, but nothing definitive. I'm going to wait because the line movement is kind of extreme. Next game, Stanford at Colorado. We got Colorado laying 11 and a half points. Total sitting at 60 and a half. Public's pretty split even on this one. It was on Colorado, then it swung back towards Stanford. Now it's basically 50-50. Sharp action is definitely in on Stanford. So I guess we'll start with some matchup history. Uh, these teams have only met three times since 2016. Colorado's taken all three. Not sure how relevant that information is, though, because as we've discussed several times, this Colorado team is completely different than years past right now. So as I'm sure all of you already know, uh, Colorado relies heavily on the passing game. Shadur Sanders having a monster season, completing over 72% of his passes, 16 touchdowns, two picks, a 158 passer rating. Colorado is eighth in the FBS, averaging over 337 pass yards per game and 122nd in the FBS, averaging just 78.7 .7 rush yards per game. 27th in effective pass, 121st in effective rush. This offense is extremely one-dimensional. Buffalo's just struggled to get the run game going against Arizona State. Just 29 carries, 57 yards, just 2.0 yards per carry. That was against Arizona State, who struggles to defend the run. And it's hard to be relying on the pass when your offensive line is consistently getting beat. Shadur Sanders has been sacked 31 times already this season. That's 129th in the FBS. Good news for Colorado, though. They play Stanford. <laughs> Stanford hasn't shown us much in terms of defending the pass. Stanford's allowing over 312 pass yards per game, 8.2 yards per attempt. They're ranked 75th in effective pass. The reason they're ranked so high with such horrible stats. Uh, they played Oregon, USC, Arizona, even Hawaii throws the ball a lot. So they're probably not quite as bad against the pass as their stats indicate. But still, this isn't a good pass defense, and Shadur Sanders should have no problem making plays through the air. And even more news for Colorado, Stanford's pass rush hasn't been that good. They've recorded just eight sacks the entire season. I don't see any reason why Shadur Sanders doesn't have a big day throwing the ball here. But on the other side of the ball, this is where we might be able to find a couple angles for Stanford. Uh, we know Stanford's going to try to run the ball. They're 37th in run frequency in the FBS. Uh, they're not very good at it. At least they haven't been. They're averaging just 3.6 yards per carry as a team. Struggling to run the ball against Oregon, I can understand that. I'd give them a pass for that. But they were struggling to run the ball at home against Arizona, which is, <laughs> that's just inexcusable. But we know that's going to be the area of attack for Stanford because we know that's the weakness of the Colorado defense. Colorado's allowing 163 yards per game on the ground, 4.7 yards per carry. They're currently ranked 129th in effective rush. This run defense is bad. It's really bad. This is 100% Stanford's path to covering the number for sure. Look at the time of possession on the season. Stanford's had the ball in 56.1% of their games. That's eighth best in the country. That's what Troy Taylor is trying to do with this Stanford team. Run the ball, keep Shador Sanders off the field. And I actually think they'll be able to do that uh, to some extent. Look, like I keep saying, I don't think there's a ton of betting value in these Colorado games. That being said, I have won two in a row. I had USC first half, and then last week I had Arizona State plus three and a half. So I have won two of these Colorado games in a row. Is Colorado better than Stanford? Of course. But we're in a different ballpark now. We're talking about laying 11 and a half points. Colorado hasn't been in this ballpark before. I think the game's going to be relatively close. I think Stanford's going to be able to run it. Uh, so I'll say final score 27-19. Stanford has the ball down eight. 
going down to tie it and throws a pick to end it. Uh, so give me Stanford plus 11 and a half. If you want my top bets, parlays of the day, if you want to join our Discord, or you want to get in on the NFL against the spread giveaway contest, head over to kylecrums.com. Uh, all the information is right there on the homepage. College football week seven. I'm getting crushed in these midweek games. Hopefully that turns around. Actually, I'm recording this before the Thursday night game. So hopefully by the time you're watching this, it already has begun to turn around. Um, remember to bet responsibly and I'll talk to you in the Discord.